We were showing the video of uh, mics of the early 20th century, and it was kind of fun because we got to hear five different microphones, predominantly carbon microphones, that we hadn't listened to out of my collection. And then we finished off with this one microphone from the early 1930s that I don't know anybody who's ever seen. That's not true. I actually know one guy, the guy that I got it from. So another collector was looking for some microphones that I had. We sat down, talked about microphones that we each had, what we found interesting and about all that. And boy, I got suckered into it. I just loved this microphone here. You know, we look at a lot of the RCA microphones and they're very angular. You see the microphones from Western Electric, the, they look like statuary, but this one was a sphere, looked like a bowling ball. Bowling ball, uh, fascinating. Why would somebody do that? As I looked uh, at it, I could see that it, it kind of looked homemade. It has a Western Electric capsule in it. It's a tube microphone, and I was fascinated by where it came from. Couldn't find any manufacturer's uh, indications on it. I knew that it came from MGM. Uh, the collector and I were talking about that, and it particularly was fun to me that it would have come from MGM, which, as many people know, was virtually a city unto itself. They had their own fire department and security and, and well, my family worked at MGM in the, the period of like 1930s going through into the uh, late 60s. So I was really interested in what the background of this might be. But I thought, okay, as a collector, I had just gotten weak in the knees and fell in love with some pretty little face that had come along. And, uh, you know, we all look at things and we try to justify why we did something. And well, I found myself at, at the AFI uh, screenings over at Arclight, and there were some books there. Now, a lot of people come to me looking for microphones uh, to fit a certain period. They're trying to see that they're the correct microphones. They're looking for knowledge about how it would be used in a television or film or whatever. So I'm always on the lookout for books. I've been collecting books uh, that include microphones since the mid-70s. Uh, whenever somebody comes to me, we try and be as accurate as possible, but I had never seen this microphone. There I am, Arclight, having just seen, I don't remember, Casablanca or some wonderful movie, feeling all in the movie uh, goer spirit, and I picked up a book. Uh, it was Turner Classic Movies had a book, and this book right here, Turner Classic Movies at, uh, at the movies, I believe it's called In the Picture with production stills, particularly captivated me because here are all these uh, behind the scenes images of, of movies made on this lot where my family had worked. Well, as I looked through them, I saw pieces from my collection. I saw the Skunk Mic, I saw the Western Electric 618, Western Electric 630, the, the original PB17, uh, and I got to this one page and I thought, oh my gosh, that looks like that bowling ball microphone that I have. Couldn't believe. As I looked closer to this thing, I found this specific microphone number 94. This 94 microphone is in this book. It's not, uh, it's not similar. It is the microphone. Um, and it's got a, a shot from Queen Christina, John Gilbert, and Greta Garbo speaking into this microphone. So I was fascinated. Being a collector, I now knew something more about that it had actually come from MGM. So I tried to learn a little more about it and couldn't find anybody. None of the collectors knew anything about it, including the fellow I got it from. Um, I tried for a couple of years to find out, and at one point I was asked by a, a researcher for the Motion Picture Academy about the RCA 10001. He had found that I knew something about the microphones. In fact, I knew a little more about it and had some. He came over to the shop, we sat and talked, we went through things, and I got off onto a tangent talking about how cool this one microphone was that wasn't what we were speaking about and how nobody had ever seen it. He said, wait, I think I've seen that microphone. I thought, how could that be? Here I am, all these collectors, no one's seen it, and this researcher's seen it. Well, turns out he had. While researching something for the Motion Picture Academy, he found this 1932 uh, piece where it's described as an MGM bomb microphone. I was thrilled. Now I knew slightly more about it. I knew that it indeed was uh, something from MGM because it describes that it had been uh, developed by MGM. He also brought me this lovely uh, ad which is touting Bakelite as a, as a product. It's an engineering magazine. It's from April 1936, uh, Electronics Magazine. 
And in there, here's a picture of, uh, I believe, I believe that's, I believe I don't know who the director is. But here's the director. They're looking and talking about Bakelite, and the microphone is the MG on bomb. So if you would like to hear this microphone, because it's, it's kind of cool, you can hear it in reference to other microphones developed, the early carbon microphones, including George Neumann's first mic under the Reich uh, patent. Uh, you can listen to this mic as the fifth one of them all. Go to our webpage, hollywoodsound.com. That will give you a link through to our YouTube channel, hollywoodsound.com. And on there, mics of the early 20th century. I hope you enjoy it, and we'll show you some more. Thanks for watching.